Visualizing electric flux around point charges. Let's start with a positive point charge and we'll call it charge Q. So we draw this little circle, I color it in red. For some reason, I think positive is red in my mind, but I draw this little plus sign to indicate that's a positive charge. Now you will see electric field lines drawn around these things and we'll get into that later. I think that's a little bit misleading. It's important to understand that the field around the charge is very smooth and continuous. So think much more like a cloud or fog. However, the electric field or electric flux is a vector quantity. So it not only has a magnitude, which we're drawing as the, the density or the thickness of that orange cloud, but there's also a direction associated with it. So I just pick some random points here and it's pointing in the direction of the field. And we'll notice it's always pointing away from that positive charge when there's only a single point charge. If I were to pick a point and trace the direction of the electric field, it would form these lines that we call the electric field lines. Typically when this is explained or when it's drawn, you will only ever see the point charge and those lines. So what we see here is much more typical of what you'll see in textbooks or what professors will draw on a board. But I really wanna caution you not to get confused or misled by this picture. The whole concept of field lines, the, the fields don't exist on lines. There's really no such thing as field lines. The fields are smooth and continuous. Those lines were something that we did by tracing the, the, the direction of the electric field as we move through the cloud. So it's a mathematical thing that we constructed. And by drawing the lines, it seems to imply that the field exists on the lines, but not off the lines. And I think that's confusing. So please, please just keep that in mind when you're looking at pictures like this. One thing you can see from those lines though is the direction of the fields and also the density of the lines does correspond to the magnitude of the field. So to summarize what we've been through, on the left is the typical way that the field around a point charge would be visualized. The picture on the right, I think, is really what you should have in your minds when you're picturing the field around charges. It's a smooth, continuous phenomenon, much more like a cloud or fog. But yes, there is also a direction associated with it. So get comfortable looking at pictures like on the left, but understand it really is what we're seeing on the right. For fun, let's look at this in three dimensions. We always draw things flat, and it's easy to forget that there actually is a third dimension, and these electric field lines extend outward from the point charge in all directions, but even still, that field is a smooth cloud. And for just a single point charge, it's a spherical cloud or fog, and that decays with distance, and that's something that we will talk about later. Let's think a little bit more about the direction of the field. I will add the direction of the field is also an artificial thing. We actually don't know the direction. We just know that it's the opposite for positive and negative charges. So just it is convention to say that the electric field lines extend outward from positive charges and they extend inward to negative charges. Otherwise, it's the exact same picture between a positive and negative charge, just the direction of the field is opposite. And notice again, I'm just doing the electric field line picture of this. Each of these would have their own field cloud around that, and that's actually what physically would exist here. Now, if there's two charges at the same time, well, they still must diverge from the positive charge and converge to negative charge. But if we have two at the same time, in fact, they will start on the positive charge, end on the negative charge, and they will bend in between. And this bending is called fringing. 
if we make one of those charges larger than the other, so maybe we have a positive 10 coulombs and a negative 1 coulomb, well, we still have the same picture of the fringings. It's still diverging from positive charge, converging on negative charge. It's just that the shape of those lines would change a little bit. Remember, the density of those lines also corresponds to the magnitude of the field. So it makes sense. The highest density here we would see around the largest charge.